Hey y'all, it's me, Nisi Lynn. I hope you're having a great Monday. This is July 13th. And um, when I finished Land of the Free last week, the Little House Needleworks, I told y'all that I hadn't FFO'd it because several y'all had asked for a little tutorial on how I finish things off and how I FFO things. So I thought I would jump on here and um, do this real quick. I will go over the things that I use um, you can use sticky board. You can use mat board. This is just Carson mat board. I have a guillotine cutter. You can use it or you can use sticky board if you have it either way. But the, this is just regular mat board. You'll need some fiber fill. I've had this for a million years and it says ultra fine, mountain mist ultra fine. So you need tacky spray, you can use a glue stick for the part that I use this on, or you can use your tacky glue that you'll have to have, your Aline's tacky glue, to um, finish off the edges. You can use a hot glue gun. I don't use a hot glue gun on mine because it leaves a little ridge. Mine leaves a little bumpy, like a ridgy place. And I don't, I don't want any extra thickness back there. So if you can press yours out and get it real smooth, go dog go, a glue gun will work just the same as the tacky glue. Wet dry rag, wet rag, dry rag, holy moly. And your stitched piece, some covering fabric. This is just what I'm using as a, to show y'all. Um, and then your two pieces, I pre-cut these and stuck these on because you need to let it get tacky a little bit. And I'll go over that in a minute. Scissors, I use a pencil. Either, um, I use this little really thing a lot or a tape measure. Either one of those will work just fine to do this. And um, then I need this to finish mine off because it's gonna go, and y'all can't see it right now because I got it pointed down and I'm gonna point it down some more and I hope it doesn't make everybody sick. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work. I've never tried to shoot a tutorial and flip the camera down. So we're gonna see um, how this works out this morning. I'm not sure, but um, the girls aren't here and I have a few minutes. So we're gonna see if we can make this work. To begin with, to decide how big to cut your mat board. I like my edges pretty tight in. Um, like I said, I'm gonna try to tilt this up. The red, it'll go at the top of that red board on the end where there's a blank little clippy. I don't give myself a lot of excess around the edge. I just don't like it. I like the my stitch piece to show more than anything else. So I usually add, when I measured my piece of stitching here, so you just, you know, you're gonna do this and this and measure, measure a couple of times. Please trust me on this, measure, measure. So when I measured, my piece came out to be four by five and a quarter. So when I went to cut my first board and I do have a guillotine cutter, it's a swing line guillotine cutter. I got it at Joann's uh, with one of my coupons. And I believe it was at Joann's. Anyway, I bought it with a coupon, like 40 or 50% off. And it wasn't that expensive that way. I think it was, I don't know, maybe $15 or something. It really wasn't expensive. And that's what I used to cut this. If you're good with scissors, you can probably cut it and get it straight. I can't get, ever get it straight enough to suit me with the scissors. And you have to be strong because it's really thick. So don't use your fabric scissors because they'll be ruined. So for my first board, I just add half an inch. So my first board that I'm gonna put my stitch piece on is four and a half by five and three quarters. The second board that my fabric will be on to surround it like my little frame is gonna be five by six and a quarter there. So I just added half to each and half to each. So that gives me about a quarter of an inch on either side of my stitch piece. What I do then is I take my pencil and that's why I said get you a pencil. I take my pencil here and I mark a quarter of an inch here, all the way around. And that's just a guide, it's not perfect, but it'll help you know 
if you're kind of where you need to be. So right off the bat, those are the things I do. I measure and then I mark where my first board is gonna be. Then the reason I did these ahead, when you spray these with this, or if you use um, your Aline's glue, you need these two pieces to get dry. So I just cut this board and I sprayed it with my tacky spray, the naked side of it, I just sprayed it with my tacky spray, okay? And then I laid this down flat on it and I just cut around it. But you need to let that get set I've never had any of it bleed through. Even when I've used my Aline's and spread it around, I've never had any of it come through onto my stitch piece, but I would just not want to chance it. So I did this ahead of time so I could go straight through with y'all. And I did the same thing with this one. I just sprayed it. It was a naked board, sprayed it with my tacky spray, and then carried it back in the house. And by the time I got back in here, it was pretty, it was just tacky. You're just gonna lay it down flat on there and make sure it's smooth and then just cut around it. You don't need, you don't need a lot because you're just gonna fold it to the back. So that's our prep. We have our stitch piece, we've pressed it and we've marked how big our board should be on the back to help us center it. We've cut our two boards with our measurements here, okay? And we're going to start right in here. So this is just a little extra piece of fabric I was, had out here to show you that, and I'm gonna flip this down, that when I did this, let's see here. I hope this is gonna work and be visible, that I just had a piece of board and I sprayed it and laid it down on here and then just cut around it, okay? You need your good side to be out because that's what, it's gonna be your little frame, okay? Like this. Is that visible? That may be down too far. Maybe we'll come up a little bit. Sorry y'all, this is gonna be major trial and error on here to see what happens. So, I'm gonna start with this piece first because it is the easiest. We're gonna move this out of the way. We're going to get our Blue, blue here, blue, blue, blue. Y'all didn't see me take that off with my teeth. Thank you, Jesus. Don't tell anybody. I am the worst about things like that. And just run you a little bead of glue right here. I think y'all can probably see that there's a little, it's about that much. It's not a ton of glue, just a little bead. And then, I think y'all can see me. I'm just gonna flap it back and pull it tight. And it'll get, it'll start getting tacky pretty quick. That stuff is great. Like I said, if you wanna use your glue gun, um, that's fine. The wet rag is because your fingers will be sticky each time. And then I draw them off on my dry rag. So that's why I have a wet rag and a dry rag. So here is our next little bead of glue. We're gonna do the same thing. I do my long sides first, I don't know why. Um, but I usually always do my long sides first. And I'm like a pro athlete, um, creature of habit. Whatever I do before I do something, as usually I do it in the same way. So we've got two sides stuck down. We've got two sides to go. So here's our other front side. So we've done this edge and we've done this edge so far. Super, super cinchy. And I will, um, I did a finish of Palooza last year and I had watched um, Vonna's tutorial on these kind of flat pieces like 97,000 times. And because when I'd done them in the past, I had really not had very much luck with being very pleased with how they looked. So with that one, you're gonna fold those two pieces in a little bit, just like that. So you're gonna crease it in so it'll fold under flat and you won't have any wonky long pieces sticking out. And then you're going to just pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it tight. 
wipe off your fingers, wipe off your fingers. For some reason, I always do this. I don't know why, just to make them nice. And so you can see that we have this one side now. This end is done pretty nice and tight. And we've got these other two sides done. So we just have one end left to do. And this is in real time, so you can kind of see it doesn't take like the Coons Age to get this done. It just goes pretty quick. And let me tell you, when I first, I mean, like I said, I've had no luck trying to do them. They didn't turn out. I wasn't pleased. Um, basically, I didn't know Hen from Hippo about finishing anything. And I watched Fauna's tutorials over and over. And they were excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, I've watched some of Kathy Haberman's also. Hers are good. But I hadn't found them when I first started, when I did my finish of Palooza. I'd only found Vonna's, so that's where I was at with these. And I want to give credit where credit's due because that's where I got a little more comfortable watching her and um, seeing how she did it. So here's our first board and we've got all four sides down. Now, when I finish off, I usually put a little piece of felt on the back to cover the whole ugly part. I didn't do that today. I didn't bring my felt piece in here to show y'all, but this piece is done. It's finished. We're ready to go. We're ready to go on to our stitched piece. So here we have our little stitch piece all pressed up. Land of the Free by Little House Needleworks. It was a thread pack. Um, it came with these four colors. And of course, I can't remember what they are. Or I would tell you. But this green and this, this is Manor Red, I think, and this green is Desert Something. This may be Blacksmith Blue. I don't think this one's Freedom. This one I think is Blacksmith Blue. But all the, they have really great variegation in them. I was really pleased with how all three of these turned out. I don't think they're available in thread packs anymore, but I think you can just find the pattern. And I scooched these guys up and put in my initials at the year down here because you know I just have to have that on there. So we have already, we've our smaller piece, we sprayed it with this earlier. After we cut it out and we walk back in waving it like this, we turned it face down on our fiber fill and just cut around it. So the fiber fill is just all the way, the little batting, fiber fill batting stuff is just all the way to the edge, but no overlap. I don't know if you can see that. There's not any really overhang here. You just trim right up to the edge of it so that you just have this covered. Since we've made our little pencil marks on here, it is gonna make centering this thing a little bit easier. There's our mark at the top. There's our mark at the bottom. But see, I, you can see I've got it over too far this way. And y'all know I don't have to have a lot of edge. That's just me. Okay, so we've got our marks and let's flip it up. Let's pull it and flip it and see if we kind of look like we're in the center there. And we do. And let's see here. If we kind of look like we're in the center here. And we do. So I normally do my long pieces always, always. When I have a really, really short piece like I do right here, I will probably do him first because I did not give myself, that's, that's not much extra even for me. And I don't have to have a lot, but that ain't much. Okay, let's see here. And the girls laugh when that happens. When you're squeezing out ketchup or mustard or anything, if that happens, they just laugh and laugh and say, shoot, you got a toot. Yes, my glue tooted, so there you go. There you go, that's your fun for Monday, my glue tooted. On screen, live. Okay, so we've got one little side stuck down. Let's flip this up to be sure we're kind of where we need to be again. We're looking pretty good. And then I leave my glue laying on its side. I know I should leave it turned upside down in my little, I keep it in a, this. 
in a moonshine jar, which after my, I haven't made any in a while. I made that a couple Christmases ago, made a big old double batch of apple pie. And one of the recipients ended up running around his granny's house naked under her coffee table laughing. So I've kind of refrained from making apple pie moonshine for a while. So the peach is the best, the peach cobbler. But after that incident, I've kind of tried to uh, lay off a little bit. Now here again, we're going to fold these in like that. Can y'all see that? But that is folded over. You want to just pull that in a little bit to um, make it, oh Lord, I don't know what that is, but we're going to pretend like it's nobody because if I, if I stop this, I don't know how to start it again. I'm assuming it's just a delivery and they normally ring the doorbell and leave. I don't know what I'm having delivered, but anyway, if it's not. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, hmm. Yeah. Let me see. There was actually somebody at the door and he went over toward Matt's house. So I'm going to um, pull this down here and see if they come back or what in the world. I think it's just somebody going door to door like they do a lot and mine do not have to be perfect y'all know that so here is this right here and here we are so far on here and I'm gonna try to pull this corner in a little bit more and this is the point where if you're a little bit off I think I'm a little bit tighter on this end a little bit higher you can kind of wiggle it around a little bit, pull it in, pull it down, pull it this way, pull it that way to make it like you want it. That's weirdness. I don't know what that was at the door. So anyway, we persevere and I'm going to roll this back a little bit because I wanted it. Um, I think it's a little bit there. There we go. There we go. So we're on to our last top side and here we go with our glue maybe getting a little glue let's see okay so here we are folding this last side down we fold it down like that okay and we're just gonna flap it back now this is the part where you can tell if you're gonna have, um, you don't want it to be square looking, you want it to be tight so it doesn't make that little, see how this looks like that? You don't want that, I don't want that. No one wants that. No one wants that. And so then sometimes you have to fight with it. You can cut off the excess if you want to. I've just found it doesn't do me much good. I still end up with a blob of stuff and then strings, more strings, so. Okay, now we're going to go, uh, 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 uh. why? I don't know, but I do. Okay, now we can see that here we've got it pulled tighter. Can y'all see that? So I'm gonna try to just roll it back a little bit, even it up across the top. You can just wiggle it around until it kind of gets to where it suits you. Like I said, mine does not, mine doesn't have to be perfect for me. It just has to be like, okay. And I'm still pulled up a little bit tight right here. Let's see if we can wiggle it down some. There we go. 
Maybe that'll help. Okay, so there's our back. Here's our front. I still feel like this corner here is a little bit off. So let's pull it and see if we can get it to make me happy. And if not, and you can tear this loose. This glue, if you get it and it wiggles loose or uh, it shifts and you don't like the way it looks, you this will just tear right up. You can just flip it up and re-glue. That is the joy of this. Okay. I think that's gonna be good enough for government work. So now we have to get this piece on here. Okay. So this is what we're shooting for. So we're going to put our glue You can just kind of wiggle it around if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It's going to stick good. I promise. And then we're just going to drop him right on here. And kind of center him up. I don't worry about, like I said, I don't worry about him being, if it's eyeball okay for me, it's fine. Then I do have this little piece here that I put on the back as a little tab on this. I just realized I was gonna do the pin stitch stop for y'all today and I forgot to bring a piece of needlework over here. Dang it. Stop it now. And make sure you put it on the top. Your tab on the bottom ain't gonna do you much good. So you can eyeball it at this point if you're really concerned about it being sort of in the middle and I'm pretty close. So. Okay. Now when I get done like this, I will take and I like get a towel, something that has some fluff to it this is one of my dish rags and it would work just fine. I usually have more layers than this though. So I would like double it. Lord have mercy God, I think somebody just walked across my backyard. I'm going to be going crazy y'all. Maybe it's just that little thing flapping in the wind. Hmm. If I wind up dead, y'all be sure and tell, okay? Lord. And then I would put a book on here, just like a heavy book, a dictionary or something to weight it down and make it really nice and flat till it gets really good and stuck. So I am going to close my glue back up and tilt us back up here. Hope I didn't just film a little tripody thing. It'd be a weird sound. Oh, sorry y'all. I ripped y'all out of the tripod, but that is um, gonna be where we're at. We finished it today while we were sitting here, 24 minutes, including all my rambling about supplies. So there you go. That is our finishing tutorial for the day. I'll see y'all later in the week. Bye.